I don't work that way in, in none of my of the things I'm doing. I don't have rules. I don't. I hate rules. How to become a great producer like you? Thank you very much. That's very nice, but. Of course, that's something I never think of because I don't think that way. And it's great if you like what I'm doing and maybe other people like that too. But I'm just doing stuff out of, uh, just out of my guts in a way. I'm, I'm never planning stuff. I just do what I do and things happen. And if some people like it, I'm grateful. If not, it's also okay. As I said, I just do what I do and Never think of it and hope I can get through with that. What is your diet like to keep yourself in shape to achieve your goals? I don't know what that means. Cannot be about my body shape. So I don't really know what that means, but uh, if it's about uh, how to keep in shape playing wise, I don't. <laughs> Uh, I have the feeling I'm, I get in a, a worse shape every day <laughs> sometimes. I just need to come back to shape when we tour actually, just by re rehearsing with the band. But I don't have a daily routine. Um, the more I play, the better I'm, I can do it. Uh, the less I play, the worse it is. So I guess it's a good thing to play a lot. Sometimes I do this when I record a lot, but sometimes I produce a lot and then I don't play so much and then I'm not in the same good shape as I am like in the middle of a tour or something. Uh, and I hope you were talking, talking about the playing and not my sport philosophy, because you will not be pleased about that. <laughs> Hi Sasha, working with Miro, how do you complement each other? That's very simple, <laughs> because we are, have a, first of all, we are friends. Um, the most important thing is respect. If you work together, that's, I think that's the best basic of any work that you do in teams. Uh, but also, I mean, I know him since the first grade and we do music together since uh, we were like 12 or something. So that's a long time ago, as you can assume, maybe. <laughs> and uh, he's a totally different person than I am even though we know each other for such a long time. He's a typical keyboard player, I would say, and I'm more a typical guitar player, so I do stuff just by feeling. And uh, Miro is more somebody that really thinks about stuff in a different way. He's planning, he, he would plan stuff more. And he's a little bit more nerdy than I am, I would say. I mean, I can be a little bit nerdy here and there, but I just do stuff and he's, thinking about stuff more maybe and sometimes that's uh, it's a very good way to work together because together we can uh, complement each other in that way and of course he's more like a, he's a keyboard player so I do keys here and there but I don't like it so much so if I have really complicated stuff or orchestral arrangements that uh, Needs, needs like really a lot of work and um, a lot of digging deeper. Uh, I, I'm very happy if I can hand it to Miro and I always know he does a great job and he, he would also listen to other opinions when he works on stuff and uh, the same, it's the same way around, I guess. Um, so at the beginning of my career, I tried to do everything and I did. And I actually started as an orchestral arranger. Uh, that's what he's doing. That's what I'm giving him now. That's what, how I started my career in a way with, um, with Engra. And uh, yeah, now it's a little bit different. So he does that stuff and uh, I'm very happy that, that I can give it away. And that's how we developed our work together. Uh, work, everybody works on the stronger parts he has and together it's a good combination. How's your approach to mixing, arranging layers of background vocals? Greetings from Argentina. I don't have an approach in general. I mean, it really depends on the on the vocal that is there. If it's a choir, if it's like a, a single voice, totally depends on what kind of song it is. You cannot really say this in general. Ah, that's really something you can't say. Let's put it like this. If I sing backing vocals, I tend to mix it much lower than a great singer would sing backing vocals. 
for example. So it depends on the quality, it depends on uh, the reason why are they are there and or if it's a choir or whatsoever. So it really, really depends. I try not to, uh, sound-wise, if you have a single voice, for example, you try to not boost or feature the same frequencies like in the lead vocal because that won't really go well together. So you make, maybe sometimes you make a little bit of a sound hole where the lead vocal fits in and the backing vocal surrounds it. Maybe that's something you can uh, think about doing in general when you work on vocals. Uh, so stuff needs space and frequency and you cannot have like a high mid frequency vocal and the high mid frequency backing vocal in the same time. It would not complement each other very well. So stuff like that, general things, that's what you usually do, I would say. But can also be completely different. Sometimes it's also good to do it in another way. So I'm, I don't work that way in none of my of the things I'm doing. I don't have rules. I hate rules. I, I work uh, without rules. I just do what comes to my mind. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's shit. <laughs> hey Sasha, oh, I was just curious. What do you do to challenge yourself as a guitarist? Nothing. <laughs> I kind of do the opposite uh, since a while. I try to not challenge me in playing because I just try to try to express something with the playing that is kind of more easily coming out of me because that works better if you want to transport emotion emotions and uh, so I try not to technically for example play on a level that I have that I'm struggling with and it's not my goal to show, show off the technique or anything like this, at least not anymore. Of course, when I was 18, uh, which feels like yesterday, uh, I, of course, I try to be technically very good and try to play as fast as possible and stuff like that. Uh, I played stuff that I can't even do anymore nowadays, but still I think I'm a better musician now and a better guitar player in a way because I just try to say something with my instrument and uh, that's more important to me. What do you think we need to start a successful career with heavy metal music? Hugs from Brazil. Um, no, hugs back. <laughs> I guess you're talking about your own band or your own career and that's uh, something very hard to say because it totally depends and uh, I guess it's very different nowadays than it used to be when I was starting my career because I was just I never thought about anything I just did stuff and just slipped into everything I was doing so uh, I never had a life plan except I want to play guitar and uh, I never had this idea of I want to have a career I want to be rich uh, uh, get girls, anything like it. Uh, I was just uh, starting kind of early, playing as much as possible, loved music and uh, tried to do it as much and as good as I could. And that worked for me because I, I did it with love. And that's that would be my recipe still because uh, it's a type of mentality, I would say. Nowadays, I've, many times I see a different mentality and uh, or different reasons for people to start this. Uh, the mentality in general is very different nowadays. Uh, people tend to uh, put out their selves in public and uh, want to shine in public and uh, be somebody, make money. Money is very important nowadays, I guess. Uh, Back in the day, the philosophy was a little bit different. It was uh, less about money. Now, I see the, the, the young bands, that they know more about how to make contracts and uh, stuff like that. And they learn everything on YouTube. There's, there, there are little films about everything, right? And uh, so they are totally prepared for their career with a, a total plan. I don't think it works that way. I mean, if it would work that way, everybody would be famous. So. I think you just have to follow, and I, th I think it's still the same thing, you have to follow your heart. It sounds very cheesy, but 
that's the way it is, I think. You just do what you love, believe in what you love, and eventually, and, and work hard on it, and eventually will, you will have success with it. And you should never follow somebody else's heart, because that doesn't work. Because you have to do what you really like, uh, otherwise, you, you are, will not be able to, to sell the stuff, to stand for something or to uh, keep up your career because you will, you will not love anymore what you do. And if you don't love what you're doing, you cannot have a career. So I think that's the most important thing. Uh, don't try to do something just because you think it could be successful. Uh, I mean, of course, you can, if, you, if you, want, you want a career as a musician, and you need money to finance this career. Of course, you play maybe uh, in other bands and do, do music you don't love, but you can make some money with it. It's a different thing. But if you work on your own career as, your, as an artist, on your own personality as an artist, you have to exclusively do what you like. And that's the easiest recipe, I would say. But it doesn't mean it works. <laughs> But it's, uh, if it works, uh, you're very lucky because then you do something that you actually like. What are your go-to master bus compression settings for metal music? Uh, do you use drum bus compression as well? What was the biggest challenge going from mixing mastering out of the box? <laughs> That's OTV, I never heard that thing. Uh, to 100% in the box, ITB. I don't have specific settings because it really depends on the song first of all it depends on that i don't use the same bus compressor all the time maybe i use uh, a similar bus compressor uh, or like one bus compressor throughout the whole album but i tend to change the settings because uh, different songs need different settings especially the release and um, yeah, especially the release times um, I, I change uh, usually I use long release times and long attack times uh, and don't compress too much but sometimes I really go with uh, the BPM or like with the, uh, I don't really calculate BPMs but I go with the, the groove to accentuate uh, snare drums or whatsoever or for me the, the song has waves or something like it and uh, I try to support that. Very hard to say I mean uh, we would have to open a compressor now and to try out different things and uh, yeah uh, I don't I also sometimes just try stuff and see what feels better I can only say I tend to compress less nowadays than I used to do before so I, I'm a little bit lighter on compression now um, I, I use drum bus compression for sure and uh, sometimes pretty much of course, I really think it can give a lot of extra punch. It could do some good stuff to the drums. And, uh, but also depending uh, on the song speed and what you really want to achieve. So really hard to have like a go-to recipe. Very hard to answer this, these uh, questions specifically. Uh, the biggest challenge from mixing out of the box to in the box is it was not like uh, I was mixing completely out of the box and then suddenly in the box so it was like a, a transition over a, a couple of years I would say so the very very first mixes completely without automation so, um, sometimes because uh, we used to record on ADATS or something like this uh, or I mean in, in the very beginning when we were, because this was not what I was mixing, but when we worked like on Heaven's Gate and stuff like this, uh, and this was mixed, that, that was recorded in the beginning times, it was recorded on analog tape, VCA automation was used, obviously, and, but when I, when I mix, started mixing later on, ADATs were already in the game, so we started to record on ADATs and this and that. I did it like this, uh, I didn't do automation, uh, I punched, uh, I had my master tracks on the ADAT as well and I just changed the setting and settings and punched in the stuff part by part. So uh, there was no ongoing automation but uh, always changing the music, punch it in and until the track was good. 
And that is a, it's a good technique. It's a little bit like uh, in the very old days. It, it was a little bit similar. They, they just splice the tapes together from different settings and uh, also from live recordings. And then I was using outboard equipment, of course, for, for reverbs and compressors and everything else exclusively in the beginning. And then we got the first mixing console uh, that was digital. It was a O2R, a big Yamaha board. For us, it was big back in the day. And uh, for example, Planet E was mixed on that, Heaven's Gate. And then we used the automation of, of this board and uh, used also the internal compression and EQs and we used it really to the extremes. On top there was a computer running that had a couple of tracks like vocals with some special effects, special automation, special plugins. You couldn't run the whole stuff like from the computer. So we just were, we were just running extra stuff in sync with the ADATs. And then it started, you could, you could do more tracks into, inside of the computer, but not yet enough plugins to have the power to really mix. And uh, it was also sounding better with uh, outboard gear. Still, there's a lot of good outboard gear, by the way. So, but then equipment, uh, the, the computers became better and uh, it didn't take long where you, can, you could actually really completely mix in the box, but I was still using outboard equipment. But the industry totally adapted, adapted to the possibilities of Total Recall. And then it was really horrible. After a while, they wanted to change stuff two months later, or people wanted to keep everything open all the time. So it was super unhandy to use outboard gear, at least for me. Uh, in, in the way we work because I was doing like five productions at a time sometimes and I just couldn't uh, handle to do all the keep the settings up really be sure it's uh, all perfect so then I really changed over to completely mix in the box but also in the meantime the, the plugins got much better so I'm, I'm right now I'm totally happy with mixing in the box I have to say I could imagine to do elsewise, but uh, not on heavy metal necessarily. Uh, I mean, I do some projects where I could imagine to, to, to completely still do them on analog and with outboard gear, just to get the li last little uh, emotion out of it or something that, that you don't have when you work with a computer. Some, some stuff gets lost on the way somehow. So it, I could still imagine doing that. But uh, as I said, uh, it wasn't a challenge, it was uh, a progress over many years. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it works. And uh, I mean, now, nowadays I take, actually I'm working on a laptop nowadays uh, and I can just take it uh, anywhere. Uh, it's just two bags and I'm, I'm I even bring the little speakers with me and I can basically mix or work anywhere. And that's a big, big advantage, of course. It's really great. But I also like the old, good old stuff, of course. So I'm a little bit split in the middle, but I basically work more in the modern way, almost exclusively in the modern way. But from time to time, it's good to get a little kickback and go back to where you come from, I would say. Uh, if you had to pick one for everything, Strat, Les Paul, Explorer, Tele, V. It sounds very stupid, but <laughs> I just picked uh, one and that is the guitar I made with Duesenberg because it's, this is exactly what it does. It's something where I get all these sounds more or less out of it. It's very versatile. Sometimes I do pick a Strat or Les Paul for specific sounds, but I'm using this guitar, it's this guitar actually, I don't know if you see it, this one, <laughs> I'm using it uh, and also the other Duesenbergs because they were already very versatile and that's the reason we, we had this idea to work on one a little bit more into the rock direction or metal direction or uh, high gain sounds, for guy high gain sounds as well. Um, this guitar really delivers everything I need. I love this P90 and I love actually uh, single coils in general, but they are not handy for high gain sounds. So on the neck position, I use this single coil P90 
and uh, I have the humbucker for, um, it's called crunch bucker, but actually uh, for the heavy sounds. And I'm pr pretty happy with that. I don't like so much in between positions and stuff. So even on the Stratocaster, I was basically using just three positions, actually only two. It's the same, I was just using the neck and uh, the bridge pickup. And I never really liked the middle pickup. So uh, it's not, it's the same goes for, uh, for Les Paul. So uh, I'm using all these guitars in the same way, more or less, but they sound a little bit different. And the Duesenberg sounds, in, has a little bit of its own thing, but uh, basically it's also a mix of all these sounds. It sounds like a big Stratocaster, uh, has, the, has a good punch and a good twang as well, but I can really make big distorted sounds with it. And it works very well uh, in down tuning because I, I play on D, D natural tuning, which is a big thing because if you play um, Les Pauls, it doesn't work as, as good sometimes to tune them down because the scale is, uh, scaling is different, it's smaller, so the neck is practically shorter. And uh, so it works uh, a little bit better with this type of scaling. All of these guitars, I mean, I have them all. Even if I don't play them so much, um, I look at them all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I pet them too. <laughs> Next question is in German. I will answer in German too, so. Hey Sascha, ich weiß, wie schwer es ist, verschiedene Stimmen im Mix gut dastehen zu lassen. Bei Avantasi hast du es ja mit völlig verschiedenen Sängern und Mix zu tun. Ist das ganz easy für dich oder sitzt du da schon eine Weile dran, um, diese um dieses großartige Resultat zu bekommen? Liebe Grüße. Manchmal sitze ich da schon so ein bisschen dran. Mittlerweile weiß ich schon ganz gut, was ich zu tun habe. Und äh, kriege die unterschiedlichen Sänger eigentlich ganz gut unter. Aber man kann natürlich auch äh, so ein bisschen den verschiedenen Sound der Sänger für sich nutzen. Deswegen hat man auch verschiedene Sänger teilweise. Und die Sachen auch ein bisschen unterschiedlich klingen lassen. Allerdings ist es wirklich so, dass äh, manche Sänger würde man eigentlich lauter mischen weil sie einfach lauter besser funktionieren, weil sie eine ganz volle Stimme haben oder so. Und manche Sänger, die haben, die haben einen ganz anderen Frequenzbereich. Die schreien vielleicht mehr oder so, die würde man eher leiser mischen. Wenn man das beides vermischt, wird es ein bisschen schwierig tatsächlich. Da muss man sie so ein bisschen angleichen. Das heißt, man würde dann halt die, die Stimme, die man eigentlich normalerweise ein bisschen voller und wärmer und mehr, wir sagen, im Gesicht mischen würde, also wirklich vielleicht ein bisschen trockener, die muss man dann vielleicht ein bisschen mehr doch beschneiden und äh, noch stärker komprimieren, vielleicht sogar minimal verzerren oder irgendwie sowas, damit das mit einer Stimme, die halt äh, äh, vielleicht geschrien mit total eine crispy Stimme, die total laut geschrien ist, damit das zusammenpasst, weil mit der total laut geschriebenen Stimme, die kann man halt nicht warm und nah machen, sondern die ist halt im Prinzip wie sie ist und wirkt auch seltsam, wenn man sie zu laut macht. Insofern, das muss man schon manchmal anpassen und manchmal sitzt man da ein bisschen dran. Halt mit EQs, Kompressionen, was man halt so für Tools benutzt, ne? auch mit Hall. Manchmal kann man auch äh, mit den verschiedenen Charakteren total spielen. Manche ist dann halt nah, manches fern. Äh, kommt immer auf die Musik drauf an. Aber es ist auf jeden Fall immer Arbeit und so immer der letzte Schritt, den ich im Mix mache. Und auch das, wo man dann am meisten Abstand auch nochmal braucht und nochmal hören muss und dann vielleicht mal weglegen eine Stunde und dann nochmal hören und denkt man so, wow, das gibt es ja gar nicht, der ist jetzt doch viel zu laut und so. Das ist wirklich nicht so einfach. Da braucht man ein bisschen Zeit und ein bisschen Geduld und äh, muss das halt einfach so lange machen, bis es passt. Also das funktioniert nicht innerhalb von einer Viertelstunde oder so. Da kann man mal so grob drüber gehen und ein paar Level machen, aber irgendwie, wenn man das mit Abstand dann hört, dann äh, muss man immer wieder nochmal ran. Also es ist auf jeden Fall Arbeit, von alleine geht es nicht. I am from Colombia and you are one of my idols. What do I have to do to produce a record with Grand Sasha? <laughs> Thank you very much. You gotta put a lot of money on the table. <laughs> I don't select stuff by something is big or is not big or whatsoever. Uh, I have kind of many offers, especially at the moment. I don't also, I don't know what's happening, but uh, so I'm lucky that I have a lot of offers. You just have to write me basically. Uh, and sometimes I'm just so overloaded with stuff that I forget to write back. <laughs> that can happen, why that's never uh, meant to be 
mean or something. It's just uh, I'm not really blessed with a lot of time and I have a lot of stuff in my head and sometimes I'm just confused <laughs> and uh, it doesn't 100% work that I take care of everything that's coming in. That's the way, I mean, you just try to write me basically uh, maybe over Facebook, via Facebook or Instagram. Then I would answer you and I would listen to the stuff. Even this is sometimes a little bit hard if somebody sends me. Um, I mean, if you imagine I'm, you're working all the time and have calls and this and that, and uh, you have the emails to write, and then you have maybe three people where, that want you to listen to your, their album. Uh, it's very hard to do this in between because I just I can't listen to an album in five minutes. So I really need some time to be able to decide on stuff, you know. So I have to be, it has to be the right timing, I have to be in the right mood to be able to take care of new stuff. And if I have time and I listen to it and I like it and I like the person that approaches me, I totally go by if I like people, uh, if I find them nice or not. Uh, usually I, I try to talk to them and, and then we might find an agreement and then I would would do that. <laughs> so just write me and we see. Hello Sasha, I'd like to ask you if you and Bonnie have any intention to make some videos playing Heaven's Gate songs. Ah, that's funny. We never talked about this actually, but it maybe it's an idea. We never had the intention to do this, but uh, maybe f f for later. <laughs> At the moment there's so many, there are so many other things I have to do, but it's not a bad idea. Also a good, good uh, possibility to meet each other more frequently. What is the music style you want to produce or play? I'm trying to produce and play what I want already. Of course there's always stuff you would want if you could. Uh, I could really imagine today to do a blues album one day and I will do it most probably just because this is, this is where I'm coming from and I love it and I would already just do it for my father <laughs> because he loves this and he helped me so much uh, throughout my career and it's just uh, something I feel I have to do one day. But I'm already doing many things that I like and uh, that I want and I don't do things that I don't want at all. So if you know my stuff, you know what I want to produce or play. <laughs> one thing, for example, is uh, something that I just did. It's a little bit different that, than what people know me for. But this is where actually originated a little bit more in, 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 in blues or in different type of independent music, I would say, more inde independent style. And it's uh, something uh, I do together with Joe Colliver from London. It's called uh, Joe Don't Try. It's a really great project and I'm, I'm loving it. And uh, we worked on, this, on it since a while and uh, it was recorded live, basically live, in uh, three sessions. And it's very pure music, done in a very different manner than I used to do the metal stuff. And uh, I just love it. And if you, if you listen to this, this happens when you do stuff that you want and you like. But as I said, I like the, I like the harder stuff too. Uh, uh, the Masters of Ceremony, I, I just listened to the album again, for example, and I really love it and uh, I just like many things I guess <laughs> and uh, and I try to be a little bit more colorful nowadays just because I have the feeling I have to do it if I don't do it now when should I do it so I try to do more stuff with a little bit more variety nowadays but I always liked it and uh, I just feel the urge to do more in that direction as well. I'm a huge Heaven's Gate fan and I consider you as a genius musician, guitarist. Oh, thank you very much. Could you tell us uh, what is your creating process to build a guitar solo? Love your music. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this and I'm very happy that you like my stuff. Uh, I'm just, it's uh, really depending, but usually I'm just playing. Uh, I try to, nowadays try to play more melodic or just think more melodic. I just uh, listen to the part and I just do what comes to my mind. That's how it usually works. And I just play. 
until I like it. So I'm improvising. Two days ago I did a, did a first take on a solo that really doesn't happen too much, to be honest. But I just opened this uh, solo part and I, I played this for, for another band as a guest and uh, just played the part, just tried out one solo and I just left it how it was. So also this happens. Usually it's more like a, I play a couple of times, I leave a part, maybe I leave the first third or like, like the ending I did and then I try to make it complete. I just punch in. That's how it usually works. Sometimes I play it a couple of times and I'm developing a solo doing this. Uh, so uh, it's the, then it's like halfway thought out in a way just because you play a couple of times and that's it. Yeah, so different possibilities. Thanks again for uh, all your interesting questions. Well, the word I love the most because I really can't say it properly. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting what you, you want to and know what you're interested in and I'm really happy if you continue asking me questions again questions again and I'm uh, sorry that I cannot answer everything but I'm trying to do as many as I can in, in the future thanks a lot